Hey, I'm David, the editor of Imaging Resource. We've been working on a review of the Sony A93, and the big thing about the A93 is the global shutter. So global shutter is a huge breakthrough in digital cameras, but I thought it would be a good idea if we did a little primer on what global shutter is, what global shutter can do, and more importantly, what it cannot do. We're gonna pretend that this board is a piece of film inside of a camera, and we're gonna pretend that this is the shutter in the camera. Now actually, film cameras have two shutters, but we're gonna just do this. I'm gonna make my table a little bit higher so that's easier to show you this. When you want to take a picture with a film camera, you push the shutter release button, the shutter moves out of the way, light hits the film, the shutter goes back down. That's it. Now the good thing about a system like that is let's say that we want to take a picture of this F16. So as the F16 flies into the frame, the shutter goes up, the shutter comes back down. So if you're shooting at the wrong shutter speed, you're going to get motion blur. But if you're shooting at the right shutter speed for the subject, what you're going to get is the subject frozen on the film because the shutter goes up and then back down again incredibly quickly. So as far as the film is concerned, nothing's really moving in front of it. It's just capturing a moment in time. Now, a lot of digital cameras also have a mechanical shutter, but we're going to just talk for a second about a sensor that is using electronic shutters. So the digital sensor has these rows and each row gets read out one row at a time. That's a standard shutter. So what happens is you push the shutter release button and the camera reads out the data on every single line very quickly. But it can only read that as quickly as the processor and the camera can handle that data. This is great when things are moving very quickly, but as things start to pick up speed, it becomes a problem, and here's why. So remember, it's going to read out from the top to the bottom. Okay, so now we've got the same F16 comes in, and you push the shutter release button, and the camera is very quickly reading down from the top to the bottom. But the problem is that when I was reading the top, the F16 was over here but by the time it got to record the bottom of the plane, it's over here. So what we get there is called rolling shutter because what happened is that as the shutter was rolling, reading from the top to the bottom, the subject stopped being in the same place relative to the camera. So as far as the camera's concerned, the top of the F16 is over here and the bottom of the F16 is over there and you get a warped F16. Now another problem happens when you're shooting under something like a flickering light source because as it's taking the picture and it's reading down the sensor, the light is flickering. So even if you can't see that an LED light is flickering, it's flashing on and off. And so as the sensor comes down, we get on, off, on, off, gives you the banding that is typical under LED lights. Another problem with that is flash photography because when you turn on the flash, as the flash strobes, you get that same thing where part of the sensor of the flash is lit and part of the sensor of the flash is not lit. And so you end up getting an unevenly exposed image. These rolling shutter effects are bad enough with still images, but when you're shooting a video, you get an even more compounded effect. So what happens when you're shooting video, especially if you're moving while you're shooting video, is that the moving of the camera adds to this problem. So now let's get to global shutter. So with global shutter, instead of it reading one line at a time, it reads the entire sensor all at once. So using a global shutter as the plane flies by, you have a second where it records everything all at once and then stops. As long as your shutter speed is fast enough, there is no detectable movement in the subject because you're reading the whole thing all at once. One of the cool side effects of global shutter is that you get much more flexible sync speed because the sensor is reading all at once. You don't end up with those scan lines where some of the light is on and some of the light is off. Another great thing about it is if you're shooting sports in the stadium under LED lights, you don't have to worry about flicker because it's reading all at once, so there's no time for it to record bright dark bright dark. Okay, so you're probably saying to yourself, if global shutter is so awesome, why don't all cameras have global shutter? There's two reasons. One is the problems, which I'll talk about in just a second, but the other reason is that right now, global shutters are really hard to make, which makes them really expensive. I really do suspect that as the technology gets cheaper, we'll start to see global shutter in most of the digital cameras, at least most of the professional ones that come out. I also think that hybrid cameras, which are ones you use for both video and stills, will definitely start to see global shutters in them across the lines because they are so much better for shooting video. Okay, so as good as global shutter sounds, there are some drawbacks besides the price. Okay, so the first drawback is lower dynamic range. Most global shutter sensors really struggle to match the dynamic range of more traditional rolling shutter sensors, which means you might lose some detail in the highlights and the shadows if you're using a global shutter. There's also the possibility for higher noise or grain in your images. The way that global shutters work introduces more noise in some situations, especially in low light, which could be not awesome when you're doing sports or wildlife. So who really needs a global shutter right now? If you're a filmmaker or you're a sports photographer dealing with like really fast motion all the time, global shutter can really be a lifesaver. But if you're mostly shooting stills, landscape, or slower paced content, the rolling shutter cameras are a much better choice for you right now, especially why global shutter cameras are so expensive. So for example, if you're shooting a studio like I am and the camera's on a tripod, it does not matter if you have a global shutter or a rolling shutter. No need to pay extra money for a global shutter when it's not gonna give you any benefit, right? 
But the other day I was out testing the 400-800 millimeter lens with the A9 III and I was photographing seagulls and I could pan back and forth with the seagulls at 120 frames a second. No worries at all about having rolling shutter issues. So global shutter is incredible, but like everything else in cameras, it comes with trade-offs. As the technology improves, we'll see more cameras with it, hopefully without the drawbacks that we see today. Okay, so was that clear? Do you have any questions about global shutter? Let me know in the comments below if there's something that I wasn't clear about, and I'll explain it there. When we have our finished review of the Sony A9 III, we will leave that in the description as well. For Imaging Resource, I'm David Schloss, and I'll see you next time.